Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Namaskar, I am Mahesh Chandra, I am Principal Scientist at ICR Indian Veterinary Research Institute at Ijatnagar in Uttar Pradesh. Today in this lecture, I will be discussing about National Program for Organic Production NPOP. NPOP was launched in 2000 to 2001 and it is one of the largest organic certification program in the world. It has been major agency for development and progress of organic farming in India. So, you might be hearing a lot about organic farming, organic production in the country, but who is regu regulating, who is controlling, who is managing this huge organic program in India? This is NPOP. So, uh, it, this is very important to know about national organic program, which was launched way back in 2000 or 2001. It has been major agency for development and progress of organic farming in India. It also take care of organic certification, because you know the organic farming is certification based, a process of certification intended for producers of organic food and other organic agriculture products. So, no product can be sold in the market without certification. So, every organic agriculture product intended for sale in the market to the consumer has to be duly certified by certification agency and then certification is done under NPOP. With the growing demand for organic food in national and international markets, it becomes necessary to ensure that the agriculture products labeled as organic comply the basic standards of organic production and entire production process is verified by the independent, independent certification agencies. I will be talking more about in these certification agencies later on. NPOP was the first such quality assurance initiative by the government of India under the Ministry of Commerce and Industry. The National Program for Organic Production provides standards for organic production system, criteria and procedures for accreditation of certification bodies, the national uh, logo and the regulation governing its use. All this is done under NPOP. The standards and procedures have been formulated in harmony with the international standards regulating import and exports of organic products. So, standards when we any country develops standards, it should be in compliance or in it should align with the other countries who import from one country to another country. So, if our standards are not in consonance with the standards of other countries, so though they may not import from, from India or India may not import if, if they are not in conformity with the Indian standards. So, this is very important. So, the National Program for Organic Production also provides an institutional mechanism for the implementation of national standards for organic production. So, in India, there are national standards for organic production. So, these are under the NPOP. So, we call them NPOP standards. So, so this uh, NPOP provides the mechanism through which these national standards for organic production are uh, regulated. The NPOP not only provides the institutional framework for accreditation of certification agencies and operationalization of certification program through its uh, accredited certification bodies, but also ensures that the system effectively works and is monitored on a regular basis. During, during 2004, the NPOP was brought under the ambit of foreign trade Development and Regulation FTDR Act, wherein it was mandated that no organic product can be exported unless they are certified under NPOP. This is very important to understand. No product can be exported or even marketed unless it is certified. And this NPOP ensures that all the organic products are being marketed, sold in the market or exported are regulated by under the organic standard WI. India. To make the certification system affordable and accessible without the need for third party certification agencies, a farmer group centric certification system was also launched by the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare under PGS India program for local and domestic market. Here it is very important to share that the 
organic third party certification or organic standards have been developed by under the NPOP, but that NPOP uh, certification is in, uh, under the national standards for organic production. So, these third party certified organic products are eligible for export, but so there are many consumers within the country, they would like to consume organic product at much cheaper rate. So, for that Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare, they have also recommended and developed a certification program which is known as participatory guarantee system or PGS India program for local and domestic market. PGS certified products are not eligible for export, they, are, they can be only marketed within the country whereas, third party certified organic products are eligible for export. So, so this the third party certification is managed under NPOP by the under the Ministry of Commerce and Industry, while the PGS program is managed by the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare. So, that is secretariat of these two, uh, uh, this, secret, uh, uh, this Ministry of Commerce and Industry NPOP program secretariat is within the APIDA that is under Ministry of Commerce that is we call Agriculture and Process Food Products Export Development Authority that is located in Delhi and then it, 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 it is secretariat is there in that one and the PGS India secretariat is under National Center for Organic and Natural Farming which is situated in Ghaziabad which is under the Ministry of uh, Agriculture and Farmers Welfare. It has to be clearly understood that Ministry of Commerce and Industry, uh, uh, Commerce and Industry does not regulate PGS India program, it is governed by the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare. Both the programs NPOP and PGS India are independent of each other and products certified under one system cannot be processed or labeled under another system. Say for example, PGS certified product cannot be labeled as NPO, NPOP certified products. These are two, there are two different labeling mechanism and their market marketing is also different. One is intended mainly for export and other one is for the mainly, mainly as the domestic market. So, the product certified under th by the third party certification which is done by the uh, under the NPOP program by the APIDA is, is not that only for export, even that product can be sold within the country also. While NPOP certified products can be traded in, in export and domestic market including imports. PGS India certified products can be traded only in domestic market. It should be clearly understood what is PGS certified product, what is uh, certified product under NPOP. So, these are two different, one can be exported, another cannot be exported, that is for the local market only. Food safety and standard for organic food regulation 2017 food by developed by Food Safety and Standard Authority of India FSSAI has notified Food Safety and Standard Organic Food Regulation 2017 under Food Safety Standards Act 2006. This is very important. So, this in, in, uh, act FSS Act 2006 is very important as far as regulation of organic food is concerned for export or maybe for within country uh, marketing. According to rules under this act, no person shall manufacture, pack, sell, offer for sale, market or otherwise distribute or import any organic food unless they comply with the requirements laid down under these regulation. So, it is a matter of the regulation that, so no one is authorized, again I am saying repeating it. No, no one is authorized to manufacture, pack, sell, offer for sale, market or otherwise distribute or import any organic food unless they comply with the requirements laid down under these regulations. These regulations are to be strictly complied with. The organic food offered or promoted for sale comply with all the applicable provisions of one of these systems. These are namely national program for organic production. So, whatever product you see in the market which is being sold in the name of organic product. So, it has to be either governed, regulated by, uh, the, the, it should be promote, uh, comp it should be complying with national program for organic production rules and standards or it should be participatory guarantee system of India regulation. So, it, the, it should be comply with the standards and the procedures of the PGS India. And third one, 
So, any other standard it could be that it is not right now there could be only there are only two mechanisms NPOP and PGS, but the food uh, authority may announce any other standard. So, any other system or uh, standards as may be notified by the food authority from time to time. So, then it is very important the organic food offered or promoted for sale has to comply with essentially with all the applicable provisions of one of these three. So, that third is not and uh, mostly these two are important NPOP and PGS India. The organic food which is marketed through direct sales by the small original producers or producer organization are determined by the food authority from time to time to the end consumer shall be exempted from the provisions of the systems referred above. So, what happens sometime there are many small scale farmers you might have seen sometime vegetables are brought in the market and they say they sell it roadside a small quantity by the producer themselves. Some scale you might have seen is small scale farmers they bring their produce very small quantities and they sell directly to the consumers and they, they claim that it is our local production we, it is organic production. So, it may not be certified that way. So, they are sometimes they are exempted under the act they can nobody can force them that you are not satisfied. So, some satisfied. So, some it, they are having some a small quantity a small quantity and they are a small scale farmer and they are selling it directly. So, when many parties are involved. So, sometimes people fear that uh, to hesitate implementing this particular uh, uh, criteria that why they are exempted. So, sometimes it may happen they pull up their products and sell it to the party and that party says that it is coming from a small scale. So, it makes things very controversial sometimes, but it is so far it is exempted that they can sell it as organic because in the small quantity they have because they, they do not have affordability for the certification procedure and also. So, the, because of the small volume they find it very difficult to sell their product through the official uh, the, the, these uh, routine marketing channels. So, they are exempted from this kind of uh, uh, NPOP or this one. So, now you might be thinking what are the objectives of the national program of organic production. So, I told a little bit about earlier now uh, coming to the Speci specified uh, specific objectives of the national program of organic production. The first one is to provide the means of evaluation of certification program for organic agriculture and products including wild harvest, aquaculture, livestock products as per the approved criteria because the criteria has already been approved. So, it, it provides a means of evaluation of certification program for organic agriculture products. So, then this NPOP it does it. And then second objective of the NPOP is to accredit certification program of certification bodies seeking accreditation under NPOP. So, so because you, we know that organic products are, are subject to certification. So, then only they can be then who certify them there are certain certification agencies, but who allow them to to be eligible to certify organic operation. So, there is a process of accreditation. So, they are approved for, under the accreditation process that is done under NPOP by the APIDA. So, they are say for example, I want to start my own certification agency. So, what I will do? So, I will approach APIDA that I want to become a certified certification body. So, then I will apply, I will submit my apply application to be a certification body. So, that certification body, so that application will be evaluated by the NP, NP under the NP, uh, NPOP accreditation program and then if found uh, if they are meeting the criteria that they are having sufficient competence to certify organic operations, they will be accredited to certify organic operations. So, that is the accreditation certification program to accredit certification program of certification bodies is one of the objective of the national program of organic production. Then third one is to facilitate certification of organic products in conformity with the NSOP national standard for organic production. So, these came into force in 2002 this national standard for organic production we do have detailed st in standards for organic production. So, NSOP came into being in 2002 and then the NPOP what it does it facilitate certification of organic products which are in conformity with the national standards for organic production that is under objective of the national program of organic production. 
Then fourth objective is to facilitate certification of organic products in conformity with the importing countries organic standard as per equivalence agreement between the two countries or as per the importing country requirements. So, here it is very important to understand. So, we have to have a negotiation with the different countries for the equivalence agreement. So, we have equivalence agreement with some other countries and, and also with the European Union because our standards are more or less similar. So, and then this is agreed, there is agreement between these countries for import and export of the organic products. Unless there is equivalence, suppose our standards, Indian standards are not equivalent to the importing country standards, so they may not agree to import from India or India may not allow import from that particular country. So, that for that equivalence agreements are being made under the NPOP with different countries, so that trade especially export is export import is facilitated for the organic products. Then fifth is to increase the development of organic farming and organic processing. So, also NPOP what, are, what it does is encourage the development of organic farming and organic processing through different uh, promotional program it does it. So, what is the now the scope of NPOP? So, again NPOP include policies for development and certification of organic products. All the policies within India are developed so by N, uh, under the NPOP program as notified by the Department of Commerce, Ministry of Commerce and Industry, Government of India from time to time. So, they are time to time different circulars are issued and these programs are updated. Say for example, right now a big exercise is underway wherein the NPOP National Standard for Organic Farming are being or even the entire national program on organic products production is being restructured. It is reconstructed because it was developed long back now 20 years have passed. Uh, more than 20 years have passed ever since it was it came into being in way back in 2001, 2002 to 2001. So, now it is being thought that since European Union has also they changed and modified their regulations and their change and updated their standards. So, it is very important for India that we also change our national program for organic production, so that we align well with the international standards and the standards of other countries, so that our trade or export does not hinder. So, we remain compliant with their standards. So, our standards have to be matching with the global standards. We cannot remain isolated, insulated from the global development because it is a matter of a global trade. We have to be well aligned with the international standards. If the changes are happening elsewhere in the world, we have to also change to update and to keep, to keep pace with the development happening elsewhere. So, national standard for organic products and processes, so these are developed under NPOP. So, NSOP is the part of the NPOP. Then the accreditation of certification program to be operated by certification bodies. There are about uh, 30 to 31 certification bodies in India and the accreditation is given to them by and under the NPOP, National Program on Organic Production. So, so then we can say that these certification bodies certify uh, uh, organic uh, uh, organic productions. So, under the NPOP regulations, then then these and, and the the, uh, the organic certification is done of the organic products as per the NPOP uh, standards and NPOP procedures. The Department of Commerce under Ministry of Commerce and Industry, Government of India is the FX body of the NPOP. So, you would like to know what is the structure, what is the framework of the NPOP. So, then the Department of the Com Department of Commerce under Ministry of Commerce and Industry, Government of India is the FX body of the NPOP. National program of organic products is governed and regulated by Ministry of Commerce and Industry in India. Then there is within the NPOP, there is the, the, the National Steering Committee is there, NSC we call it under the Department of Commerce. It is responsible for the implementation and administration of national program of organic production, including framing of standards, accreditation, policy, procedures and regulation for use of certification trademark, India organic logo. So, India organic logo is there, which is, which is regulated under the NPOP by the by the NSC, 
which is within the national program of organic production. So, right from the at the apex body is Ministry of Commerce and Industry, then within that there is national steering committee, it is then the members are from the heads of the various departments. So, maybe may be director, chairman, so they are the member of the steering committee because it is the top level committee which is responsible for the implementation and administration of the national program of organic production. So, that includes framing of standards. Say for example, if now standards are being revised and updated, so then it, it is looked after by the steering committee and then the accreditation policy. So, how the certification bodies should be accredited, it is also it is the job of the steering committee to frame policy for the accreditation of the certification bodies. Procedures and regulation for use of certification trademark, how the certification trademark should be used that is to be seen then, then the policy for that to be decided by the to or approved by the national steering committee for the organic products. Then another body is that within the NPOP national accreditation body NAB we call it, this is national accreditation body which is responsible for accreditation, evaluation and implementation of accreditation program for certification bodies. So, it is very important, there are one apex body under Ministry of Commerce, then NSC is there, then the national accreditation body NAB is there, which is responsible for accreditation, evaluation and implementation of accreditation program for certification bodies. Then comes APIDA. APIDA is Agriculture and Process Food Products Export Development Authority and then the, they have one act, the, the, this APIDA act as the secretariat for both the NSC and NAB. So, you might be thinking if there is bodies like NAB, NSC, where these are located, where is the secretariat of these important national level bodies, so APIDA. Agricultural and Processed Food Export Development Authority, which is an agency under Ministry of Commerce and Industry, Government of India, it is located in Delhi. So, it, this act as the secretariat for both the National uh, Steering Committee and then National Accreditation Body. APIDA also coordinates the functioning of technical committees and evaluation committees and ensures implementation of decisions of NSC and NAB. This is very important role of APIDA. Functioning of technical committees, there are several technical committees, say we say there is technical committee for organic livestock products, there is technical committee for the aquaculture products, likewise horticulture product, there are subject specific committees. So, then APIDA coordinates functioning of these technical committees, time to time they need to have technical advice coming from the experts having expertise in different areas and they are the part of these technical committees. And then there is evaluation committee, evaluation committee is the committee which goes to see the audit, they audit the organic production facilities, say organic farms, they go to and then they, they see the audit, they see how certification agency has worked. So, whether they have done well or not, so this, this evaluation committee go randomly and they, they go and check and to oversee uh, organic agriculture operations, organic livestock and poultry production activities, whether the producer has done in conformity with the guidelines or the standards or not, whether the certification bodies have seen the certificate, they are uh, overseen the production function because every organic operation is under the, it is being certified by one or other certification agency. So, just to monitor it properly that organic production is going on well as for in conformity with the standards, it then APIDA sees to it that it is not only left to the certification body only that they are certifying and then everybody is agreeing with that certification, that certification has done in a right way. There is another body just to oversee how the certification body has done its job of certifying operation as per the standards or not, there is a evaluation committee. So, there are evaluation committee, APIDA sends them time and time, time to time to different agriculture operations, which later on they, they become eligible to export the product. So, it is very important that auditors, so we, we also we can say that audit. So, for audit this evaluation committee go to the farms. Then there is at uh, there is about trace net. 
this organic production is subject to giving a lot of information online. So, so that a traceability platform is created where a product, suppose you are it consuming some product at his at your home or any restaurant and you read the level of the product and you see that this product has been produced at such and such farm located at such and such place because that information has already been given there in the packaging and the uh, packaging level. So, it is available. If you want to see, if you want to see where from this product has come, how it has been grown. So, you can see it. So, for that traceability is ascertained. So, TraceNet is there, it is maintained by APIDA under the national program of organic production. So, so what is the service? There is a one organic farmer, whatever information, whatever he is having and whatever written record he has maintained that has to be fed to the computer system and pass it on to the computer system and the facility maintained at APIDA. So, that every producer is having uh, is able to maintain his written record of his the production activity. So, the date of say sowing, date of harvesting, inputs used and how he produced harvested and every activity it is, it is lot of documentation work I am telling you. So, in, con in comparison to conventional uh, production, in case of organic production, every record has to be maintained at the level of producer and also at the level of the apida. Suppose apida want to see that the particular farmer growing particular crop, when he did sowing and how much he produced, how what input he used in his farm, every record can be traced back through trace net maintained by apida and then basic information provided by the by the producer and that is also certified and verified by certification agency also edited by the evaluation committee which is deput uh, often deputed by the apida itself to oversee the production process tracenet is an online traceability platform to maintain entire database and chain of custody of NPOP and ensures implementation of entire certification program in a time bound manner with traceability linkages for all the consignment released for trading. So, it is very important that whatever consignment is being released uh, for, uh, for trade, it has to be maintained in the tracenet. So, let me say something, let me tell you something about the certification process. Uh, certification, organic certification is a process certification intended for producers of organic food and other organic agriculture products. So, it is a process certification because entire right from the soil preparation to sowing to harvesting and the processing and entire process is evaluated at every level and the data maintained and it is seen verified by the agency, by the certification body as well as by the evaluation committee. Then it is the, the this process certification uh, is sees that oversee that the process. So, here I, I would like to say that sometimes people question it. Suppose a organic and inorganic product is kept on the table. Say take the case of milk, if a one glass of milk is kept there and another glass of milk is there, one is filled up with the organic milk and another one with the conventional milk. So, will anybody will be able to tell which one is organic, which non-organic. So, I would say that it is not possible to judge purely based on the final product that this is organic product and this is not organic product based on the final product. It is not that. In case of say organic milk production, it is seen the process, how this milk was produced right from the, uh, the, uh, the what kind of a, uh, what the feed was given, whether it was organic feed or not. So, what kind of a treatment welfare measures were taken and how milk was drawn, how it was processed and how was it was marketed, everything that is very important and once all the steps have been followed as per the organic standard and processes, then only it will be eligible to be called organic milk otherwise. So, that so, it may so happen there is no difference in constituent of the milk between organic milk and non-organic milk. So, then it conventional milk. So, it, it is it may be entirely it may be same, but one has followed the process another has not followed the process of organic production. So, this is what is the difference it is not the product certification it is the process certification. In general any business directly involved in food production can be certified including seed suppliers, 
farmers, crop, livestock, food processor, retailers and restaurant. So, it is, it is that different activities are there. So, each segment is subject to certification. So, if somebody is producing seed and he is a seed supplier, he want to get certified with seed supply operation, seed production. So, that seed production activity can be certified as per the standards. Likewise, livestock. So, livestock can be certified. Some, some may be processor, they might not be producing, they might get a food products, a raw food item and then it may be processing. So, then the processing, food processing facility can be uh, certified. So, then retailer also can be certified by how he is maintaining the food or integrity, uh, integrity of the food and restaurant can also be certified. So, you might have seen some people are nowadays, some restaurant are claiming organic restaurant. So, they, they follow. Now, even the tourism is being certified as the organic tourism because they are following certain processes which they are meeting certain requirement, then only they are giving getting that certificate. Requirement vary from country to country and generally involve a set of production standards for growing, storage, processing, packaging and shipping. shipping. So, it is a, there may be a little bit variability between the standard and every country is free to evolve their own organic standards. So, every country, most of the countries now gradually, even those countries which right now they do not have any standards, now they are working, uh, working hard to develop their own standards because they also want to get into the organic trading and they want to cast upon the opportunity of the growing market for the organic products. So, different countries are developing their own standards. If they do not have their own standard, they are adopting the standards of the other countries or say for example, as such they sometime they take e European Union or some other standards and they say that we are compliant to these standard fully. So, that kind of, so, so what that include? So, so these standards what they coverage? It's provision of synthetic chemical inputs. So, when you read the standards, so you will find that certain, they do have a list of the restricted items, prohibited items like chemical fertilizers, pesticides, hormones, antibiotics, food additives and so on and genetically modified organism. If you look at any standard document of any country, you will have the, at the annexer at the end of the, the document and as an annexer you will find there is a list of the prohibited item and also that will be mentioned in the standard in the main document itself that what are the items which are restricted, what are the items which are prohibited which cannot be used in organic production. Say for example, these are some of the common thing and maybe many smaller things are also mentioned in that document, but major item you will see the chemical fertilizers are not used. So, pesticides are not used, hormones in case of livestock to induce fertility and their productivity and growth growth promoters, they are not used. So, antibiotics are uh, very restricted, they are mostly prohibited and with certain condition they are sometime allowed. Food additives are not allowed, many times you find the flavor, flavoring agents, food additives just to have the more self life or to increase their longevity, some food additives are added. So, these are not allowed and in case allowed that it will be mentioned that this particular thing is allowed if not allowed it will be mentioned and genetically modified organisms are not allowed. You might be hearing a lot of debate around GMOs, genetically modified organisms. So, these GMOs or genetically engineered products including the genical, genetically engineered vaccines are not allowed, they are prohibited under the organic production systems. In case of livestock breeding, embryo tra transfer technology is not allowed, but a artificial insemination is allowed. Use of farmland that has been free from chemicals or a number of years, often two or more. So, sometimes they permit that which farmland should be used, should be made eligible for organic certification. So, if no chemical has been used in particular land and there is evidence provided that no chemical has been used in this year for this many years of, say maybe often two or more year, it should not be less than one year. Generally, if you want to make eligible any land, we have to see that at least for last two years, there should not have been any chemical used in that land and that is well uh, documented in the uh, certification standards. Keeping detailed written production and sales record. So, for audit purpose, as previously I told that every organic farmer is supposed to maintain detailed written record, production and sales record that the for auditor, if any audit, audit agency or even certification body, they can, uh, they can make random checking 
or they can they can with the announce or an announce they can visit the farm just to see and they can check the record what the farmer has done what activity suppose he has given treatment to animals some allopathic treatment maybe some antibiotic treatment he has given some allopathic medicine he has given then the certification body or audit agency has to see that on we on whose prescription antibiotic under what condition antibiotic was given to livestock if a livestock was vaccinated under who prescribed the vaccination, why it was needed to go for vaccination, whether it was the law of land, whether disease were endemic routinely happening in that particular area to prevent that disease, so vaccination was done or not. So then audit agency, they will verify all these kind of thing what is done and then they, it should be to their satisfaction, all the records should be maintained. Maintaining strict physical separation of organic products from non certified products. So, it is so allowed that a farmer may have parallel production going on. He may be having, say for example, if having somebody is having 6 acres of land. In 3 acres of land, he, is, he may be having organic production or in remaining 3 acres of land, he might be having conventional or non-organic production as a routine production he might be having. So, it is, it is possible, but their physical separation has to be there. So, when they are harvesting, it should not be kept at the same place, it should be separated, there should not be any intermingling of the product of organic and non-organic one. So, that has to be seen by the organic, this auditing uh, or auditors or certification body or evaluation committee. So, then, then the certification is also uh, 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 requires that undergoing periodic on-site inspection. It is not that we are sitting in our office and from there we are controlling organic operation. It is not like that. Periodic on-site inspections are made. So, certification uh, addresses a growing worldwide demand for organic food and everywhere in the world, the certification is the mechanism which, uh, which addresses the growing worldwide demands. It is and uh, ensures that the organic food what is being available market being pre traded or made available to the consumer it is duly certified that is done in every every country they do have a certification bodies they certify the product it is intended to ensure quality and prevent fraud you know in the market lot many people because now many consumers are getting attracted to organic food so then there is lot of fraud is also going on so just to prevent that fraud then they to or to assure quality to the consumers, this certification is very important. Certification is only meant for that thing only to assure the quality and prevent the fraud. Nobody should can claim that this product is organic unless it has follows the procedure. For organic producers, certification identifies suppliers of products approved for use in certified operations. So, also the input use. So, there are the inputs because for agriculture production, we need the producers need inputs. So, this, then who will, who will certify this and identify the supplier? So, then the certification system approves the suppliers of the products approved for use in certified operations because if a producer is producing organic product, he needs certain input. These input need to be produced by some producers. So, then certification agency also look into the those uh, to, uh, to identify who are these things, they, these suppliers are also approved for different kind of a, say for example, bio inputs, bio pesticides, so and the seeds, so who is supplying organic seeds. So, then it is very important for consumers certified organic sub as a product assurance similar to low fat, 100 percent whole wheat or artificial preservatives, no artificial preservatives. So, you, you see that whenever you see the organic product, you will see the various kind of uh, uh, claims made in that product. Sometimes the, there will be product low fat. So, low fat means it will be guaranteed that the product is having low fat because some consumers are very particular for the low fat, they do not want to consume. But in India, we sell milk on the fat basis, in India we have, but in many western countries, they prefer low fat. They, they would need some people to guarantee it that this milk is really low fat. Likewise, some person say 100 percent whole wheat or, or no artificial preservative. In many uh, processed product, many artificial uh, 
preservatives are used or food additives are used, sometimes people avoid having, they would like to have product which are not added with preservatives, which are artificial in nature. So, then who will guarantee that one? That certification uh, program guarantees that one. So, certification is essentially aimed at regulating and facilitating the sale of organic products to consumers. So, you as I said that, so it aims at regulating and facilitating the sale of organic product to consumers. So, now it is, uh, I will tell you a little bit about third party certification. India is among the first few developing countries to have developed and launched a credible third party certification. So, third party certification, why we call it third party certification? Because one party is producing, one party is regulating and then third party has to be there. If the same party, the same party cannot certify. So, it has to be an independent body which can be, uh, we can give unbiased certificate that the production is certified organic. So, then for that we need third party certification. So, so, national program on organic production, which is which was launched as I told previously during 2000 or 2001, because during this period it was launched for farm and livestock certification for organic commodities was the first milestone for organic quality assurance system in the country. So, when India was trying to develop its organic program, so then NPOP, then it was the requirement that they should have a certification program to certify the organic commodities. So, it was uh, within NPOP, this certification program is the very important component of the NPOP. Now, currently about 30 accredited certification agencies are authorized under the program which are certifying organic products in India. So, in case you are willing to convert from the conventional production to the organic production and if you want to get certified your operation, you have to get in touch with a certification agency which will certify your operation. You will have to become the client, so you will have to make that producer as of one of your client. So, then they, you will give them guidance and also certify their op uh, operation. So, right now nearly 30, it may be 29 or 31, so keep on changing sometime dropping some new added, but there are 30 credit, uh, accredited certification agencies, they are allowed to certify organic operation in the country. So, an NPOP certification system, it is a third party certification. As I told previously, there is another certification mechanism which is PGS certification, which is, which is not third party certification, it is a different kind of a certification. It is a, by the group base, a, a committee is there who certify it and that product is only can be marketed in the domestic market. So, but NPOP certification is uh, different and then NPOP certified products can be exported. NPOP certification is a system of process certification. As again, I am emphasizing, it is not product certification, it is process certification, wherein an independent organization reviews entire production, processing, handling, storage and transport and other items to ensure the compliance of the organic standards. So, it is a complete uh, process is uh, uh, certified. So, right from the entire production and the after production there is a processing, then handling of the product, then the product sometime is storage. There are criteria and guidelines for the storage also and for the transport also. In case of animals for example, if livestock, organic livestock is transported, then there are a standard. Also in case of transport standards are also there in case of conventional product, but in case of livestock products, these are strictly complied with. So, how long hours will be there, water availability on the way, how many animals kept can be kept in a, in a truck or a vehicle at a time and then all their feeding on the way, uh, feeding requirements and different things, they should be met, transport requirements are there. To th then it should be ensure the compliance of organic standards should be, comp uh, should be seen that at every level. The process includes comprehensive review of cultivation practices including land management, use, usage of inputs, use of machinery, pest management and poor harvest in case of crops. So, when I am saying different activities, these are the activities, land management, how the land being managed, what kind of uh, 
uh, uh, inputs are being used or soil fertility measures are traded, whether they are on organic or not. Say for example, if they are trying to improve soil fertility by making some chemical intervention, so chemical treatment of soil, so that is not allowed. So, how inputs are being used in that system, it is to be seen and verified by the certification. Use of machinery, how that is being used, pest management, how pests are being managed, managed, whether chemical pesticide being used, chemicals are being used, so that are not permitted and the post harvest, how after the harvest, how these crops are kept, how they are maintained, how safely, whether there is anti intermingling within non-organic products. So, that is as previously I told that one farmer can go for both organic and non-organic production in his same farm, but he has to ensure that there is no mixing, intermingling of the organic and non-organic products. Then in case of livestock, rearing practices compatible to their natural behavior. It is very important that they do have certain natural behavior. So, in case of pigs for example, they have rooting behavior, they poke their nose in the water. So, this, it should be ensured that it should be the standard rearing practice should be compatible with their natural behavior. They should not be restricted to perform their natural behavior. Welfare of animal is very important and it should be ensured that, that the third party should ensure that the animal welfare is not compromised in any case. Avoidance of synthetic feed additives, again not only in case of human consumption, so synthetic feed additives are not permitted in case of the livestock products also and hormones as I told previously growth promoters or fertility boosting hormones and also sometimes oxytocin is being used such kind of the interventions are not allowed under synthetic and limited uses of allopathic drugs. Allopathic drugs in general are not allowed, but there are certain allowances given. So, sometime when there is no other effective alternative is available under certain conditions allopathic drugs in case of animal production is allowed and these conditions are well written in the standards itself. And then antibiotics in animal products, so certain standards for example, NOP of the U United States is have they are very strict on antibiotic use in organic uh, animal husbandry, but in case of Indian standards and European standard antibiotics are allowed with certain. Uh, requirements, withdrawal period to be followed and then sometime if you have given antibiotic treatment two time in a year, so then third time it is not permitted, you have to withdraw that animal from the production facility. So, these antibiotics are allowed under certain systems including in India, but the, there are restriction of their use, there are prescription how it can be done and also it is very important whatever uh, these allopathic drugs or antibiotics or vaccination is given to animal, it should be with the advice of, on the advice of the qualified animal health care provider, these are the veterinarians, they should be consulted and then only it should be given. And then processing and handling through document review and on site physical inspection. So, these all these things how anybody will wonder how this is ensured, this is ensured through the document which is to be reviewed by the certification agency or auditors or that evaluation committee which I told you previously that is uh, evaluation committee by the APIDA. After the certification agency has certified the operation, the auditors they go and they check it and verify that the producer as well as the certifier has done their job well. They are looking at the review and they can, they can make, they can call the documents and they can verify, they can see the data and whatever record has been maintained, they can call the record and they can see it and but they can also go, they can make on site physical inspection. That is also important part in the third party certification system. So, all such certified products bear the certification mark on their packaging to help consumers and other buyers make informed purchasing decision. It is very important nowadays, buyers have become, they have, they are, uh, they are now very well qualified and as the income is going up, educational level is going up, consumers are become more and more aware, they, they read very closely the label, they also look into the fat percentage, they see the origin of the product, who are the producer, who has certified it and then who has given the assurance those assurance giving mechanism, they are going through the level very fast. Unlike the olden days, earlier days where consumer would consume any product 
straight away without reading the label. Now people are very cautious and they take very informed purchase decision they make and that informed well informed purchasing decision they make based on the information contained in the document in the label of the product. So, this is the, uh, this is the structure of the national uh, program for organic production. So, as I, I, I am towards summarizing the things, I am telling you Department of Commerce, Government of India is the highest authority which regulate, which uh, controls or he monitors national program for organic production at the apex level, this is the highest body. Then there is national steering committee. National committee, committee headed by the many heads of the organizations, the high level officials are there from the different departments because it is not the matter which is which is to be looked by the only single agency, but from the various organizations. Sometime, sometime the ICR institution directors are there, member of that committee, coffee board, tea board and different other organizations. So, they are the members of the high level officials or the members of the national steering committee for the organic production. Below that there is national accreditation body usually headed by a joint secretary in the ministry of industry and commerce. So, then and there it is also having members from the various departments. Then as I told previously APIDA act as secretariat of the NPOP. So, all these things are uh, this thing, all the different meetings and all different meetings of the national steering committee, meeting of the national accreditation body NAB and the certification bodies, they are organized and coordinated by the APIDA because it being the secretariat of secretariat of the NPOP. Then there is evaluation committee. So, evaluation committee is constituted by the uh, by the APIDA. So, then this evaluation committee are trained, they are given some kind of a training on evaluating the organic production sites, processing units and all, they know without training they cannot be evaluation committee member. So, APIDA arranges the meeting for the evaluation committee members, After once they are having the meet, uh, attended the training, they are giving the certificate and they are approved, their nomination in the com uh, evaluation committee is approved by the national accreditation body NAB. So, this is the regular and there are a number of evaluation committee, time to time they are called to go for audit of different. Then there are certification bodies, I, I told that nearly 30 certification bodies are there, they are, they are properly accredited, they had applied for that one and then they were, their uh, application was considered and approved and they were made eligible, they were accredited to certify organic programs. What they, they this, what they certify this, their mandate is certify wild harvest collector. Suppose somebody says that I am collecting product for, for consumption from the wild. So, then they will, they will certify this wild harvest operation. Then farmers operator groups are there. So, then they will certification bodies approves their, their production. Then there is Processor, processor and processing units are there. They apply for certification and then these certification bodies, they they approve, they, they verify their product processing operation units and they go and there are handlers or exporters also. They are also certified by the certification bodies. Not everybody can be handler or not everybody can be exporter. The, the list of exporters are also maintained by the APIDA. They are also verified and they are seeing their credibility and credentials are also maintained well by this thing, which is also verified by the certification bodies. It is not that every level there are check, there are check so that the consumer are assured of the organic product. There is lot of cheating in the market. Everybody nowadays, if you look go to market, they are claiming that they are organic producers, their, their product is organic. Now, it has become a fashion to claim every product as, uh, as organic product. So, it may not be and many people complain that lot of che cheating is going on, they lot of spurious matter. Also, in matter of uh, export, lot many time export consignments are being rejected by the importing countries for because of the poor compliance of the standards. Sometimes they will say the residue limit of a particular, particular aspect, particular chemical and this kind of thing, it should be at this level, but this le level is being violated. So, then what happens? Suppose I am, I am an exporter, I am exporting certain uh, container, some, some commodity to some, some country in Europe 
and then it is not that they will believe me just because there is a, it is a certified product by the exporting country. They will have their own mechanism to check it and verify it. Sometimes they go for the kind of a sample testing. They will take sample and then if they, if they, if they see that it has the, that it is more than the permissible, permissible limit of the particular uh, particular chemical into that one. So, they may not allow it and they can reject the consignment and they will lodge the complaint with the exporting country that such and such complaint and it is regularly being being overlooked and then there is a regular complaint then strict action should be taken. So, what the APIDA does as, as a secretariat, so with the approval of the NAB and then what they do this there is a kind of a punishment mechanism also on the certification bodies. Sometimes certification bodies are banned, sometimes a fine is imposed on them that is very heavy penalty and sometimes they are restricted for the certain period of time. A ban is imposed on them for one year or two year, they at that during that period they are not able to export their product or certify their products. So, because of the complaint loans. So, government is going to be stricter because there was a complaint from the many importing countries that the Indian products are so many times flouting the requirements. So, organic criteria and all the parameters and the requirements they are not as per to the standards. So, they they, they complain and the government is bound to take action on that. That is considered these certification bodies are questioned then. They are, they are asked to explain why you have violated the rules standards, why what is the reason that. If their response is not satisfactory, then the NAV impose fine on them, sometime they are banned for this one. So, this, 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 this is the structure you can now, then towards the end of the, this lecture. I will say that organic standards are notified including for livestock and poultry production. So, this is the document you can have a look on that. And fortunately, this document is freely available for download from the website of the APIDA. APIDA.government.in you give the link and then you ask the look for the national program for organic production. So, so, you it will be a very guiding, very good guiding document wherein you can familiarize yourself with the requirements of the organic production. In case you are a livestock producer, in case you are a aquaculture producer, you will find the standards written over there in these documents you can find even if you are for the honeybee producers. So, you are making certified organic. So, these standard you can find out this in document and this document are now may go in coming time as the European standards have been revised. So, it may also be revised till the time it is not revised. So, the same standard will work. So, you will find that how to produce organic products as per the standards prescribed under NPOP and available in this document which is available in the APIDA website and you can read if you want to have a growing particular crop, you can look into the crop criteria. In case of livestock, you have to the livestock producer has to comply both the requirements both the crop production required for growing feed and fodder and for, for livestock production there are standards. So, that has to be followed. So, what I would suggest you after telling all these things, what I spoke to you, what I shared with you, what I told to you that is not good enough to understand this process of organic production fully. Then if you want to be certified organic producer or you want to be a trainer in the, this area, if you want to be a trader or processor, any activity in the value chain of organic agriculture value chain, you can take up any job, but you have to be skilled in this area. For to be skilling yourself, it is very important beyond this lecture, you have to look for further information. Say all of you, if you are listening 50 percent of 50 participant are in this lecture program. If out of 50, you may take off any other kind of job. So, maybe one activity or other activity, but whatever activity you are taking up, you will have to familiarize yourself with the standards and you will have to understand what is NPOP itself. So, then you have to look into what is NPOP, you have to understand yourself so well and you can leave, read lot of literature beyond that. There are now books maybe on organic livestock and poultry production there is book available, maybe organic seed production also for maybe organic paddy rice production, how it should be done. In every area you will find lot of literature 
videos in YouTube, how the production process should be done. You can get in touch with the certification agencies who will tell you how to get product, your production certified. You can take advice from the APIDA secretariat, different aspect. You can register yourself in the TraceNet and you can apply for becoming organic farmer. For example, if you want to become organic producer. So, a lot of information available, it is up to you how you make best use of that information available so that you can make something good for yourself. So, thank you very much.